think so many people are watching women's basketball right now. Yeah. It all started from the national championship game, and I've been dealing with this for two years now. And understanding, like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball that you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like, just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like, I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role, and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watch women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too, and I want y'all to realize that. So the Internet is the only place in the entire world where you can say whatever it is that you want to say and then act like it never happened. It's the only place in the world that you can really play the victim and get tons and tons and tons of people to give you simp support as you publicly display the worst parts of yourself including the very things that you're being accused of. Do y'all remember? <laughs> Do y'all remember a couple months ago, right after March Madness? This is for my sports people. This is for my sports watchers. Those of you who watch sports, particularly basketball. Do y'all remember during March Madness when Angel Reese lost and then her and her team's coach, instead of taking the loss on the chin, right, at the hands of Caitlin Clark, they lost. Instead, they went live on the panel for ESPN crying about how she's been victimized by everybody and how she's had to stand 10 toes down while she fought against these entities of people that were constantly trying to destroy her and, and oppress her and bring her down. Y'all remember that? If you don't, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it because the internet is forever. So I got it for you. I got you right here. I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know like I'm still a human. Like, all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you no, know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But... Keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. Okay, so y'all remember that, right? She said, hey, she was being oppressed, right? She was being physically and sex overly, overly sexualized. That's what she said, right? And she's not the only one that said that. That's her coach said the same thing. Said that she was a victim. She was a victim of media. She was a victim of men sex, over-sexualizing her by nature. Well, let me ask you all a question. Is this what, let me ask you, is, is this what over-sexualization is right here? Because when you go to her page, <laughs> this is directly from her page, by the way, from her vault. Let's go to her page. Angel Reese, over 4.3 million followers. Now, do you think that a person who has over 4.3 million followers should be dressing this way? Now, on the surface, you might say, well, it's not so bad, right? It's not so bad. It doesn't look that bad. Oh, wait a minute, though. I'm going to just let it keep playing. Fool me.
me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, it's shame on me. Only in this country can you cry to the media about how you've been objectified and over-sexualized and then turn right around and grace the national stage. Grace the national stage with your ass cheeks on full display for the very men that you claim have over-sexualized you. This is absolutely absurd. Only in America can you get away with this type of behavior and then cry about it and cry about how it's to your detriment. I can see very clearly here. If you go to Angel Reese's page versus Caitlin Clark's page, which now has been a big debate, right? The Angel Reese versus C Caitlin Clark in the WNBA has been the biggest headline of the WNBA for the last 10 to 20 years. And Caitlin Clark recently won a rookie MVP, right? And everybody was up in arms. They couldn't believe it. This, they said, this is insane. They said, this is insanity. No way could Caitlin win over Angel Reese. Somebody who was, who was as dedicated. Somebody who was putting up numbers like Angel Reese. Excuse me. Did y'all see what that young girl did, Caitlin Clark? How she was dominating, how she took a nothing team that she was on and took them to a championship? Are we watching the same sport or are, we, or are you watching with your, with your biased blinders on? Hmm? It's very clear to me when you go to Caitlin Clark's page, Instagram page, and you go to Angel Reese's page, you're going to see two different pages. One appears to be focused on the sport and advancing the sport and getting better in that sport and mastering her craft. The other seems like mm, her time may be split. Her focus may, be a, may seem a little bit split, may be a little off. She's not entirely 100,000% invested in the WNBA. No, she has dreams of also being a model, of also wearing, wearing skimpy bikinis on covers. The money, the fame. Every time you look up, she's on somebody else's podcast. Every time you look up, she's with another uh, artist. Well-known artist. We can't keep doing things to ourselves and to our own image and then blaming it on everybody else. That's the bigger point here. You are your own detriment. You are your own enemy. But victimhood tells you that it's okay to blame it on everybody else. Can we all be for real? Can we all be real? Are we going to all continue to be a part of this victimhood and then blame everybody else for our struggles and our problems and say, oh, my God, woe is me. Woe is me. I can't believe everybody expected me to perform. Angel Reese isn't just comfortable with just being a good basketball player and letting her game show on the court. No, she wants to talk trash. She wants to talk the trash, right? She wants to appear as all these different things. All the while, somehow you still, uh, you want to be the bully and the victim. It don't work that way. You can't play both parts. You can't play both. You can't be Denzel in training day and also be the victim. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. You got to choose. And it seems to me that Angel Reese has chosen. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. I'll, I'll see y'all in the next one.